Welcome to our November 2017 edition of Sports Highlights. My name is Greg Picaveras. Glad you're with us. For more, log on to nnpstv.com. Hope everyone has a great and healthy and happy Thanksgiving as well. Our show airs on Mondays at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m., weekends at 9 a.m. on Cox Cable 47, 517, and of course, nnpstv.com and YouTube. At Greg Bick on Twitter recognized by the Newport News City Council in 2016 as well. The show has, as well as Communicator Awards, too. Our first guest is Mr. Evan Key. He is the brand-new head men's basketball coach in the Apprentice School. Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. Thanks for having me. I like your tie as well. <laughs> Tell us about your background. Uh, DeMatha High School, rich in basketball tradition, Morgan Wooten. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a very, very rich tradition in athletics. I had the, the great chance to, to attend there for four years. Wasn't on the basketball team there, but kind of got my chance at coaching youth basketball at the time. My dad was a youth basketball coach in our hometown, and he kind of carried me with him, and I got a chance to, to kind of sit in on his practices, and eventually I was helping him make game plans and everything else, and that helped me transition. Uh, and when I got to college, I was a student manager at Hampton University for three years, and we had a lot of success there. I worked for two great coaches, uh, Coach Joyner, who's still there now, and Coach Nickelberry, who was there my freshman year. And from that point on, I um, took a job at Christopher Newport. Uh, it was my first coaching job my senior year in college. And from there, I've, I've jumped around a couple different places. Would you consider yourself a basketball junkie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so you eat, drink, and sleep basketball. Yeah, yeah, that's really my only hobby. I really don't do much else other than basketball. As my guys are kind of getting to know me, they ask a lot of times what I'm doing on the weekends. And usually, it's something basketball related. That's so great. And of course, you talk about uh, basketball. You mentioned uh, manager. You preferred to the coaching, managing side as opposed to actually playing? Because I'm sure you could have played at a smaller school yeah. as well. Oh, absolutely. It was just kind of, I, I kind of had a general idea early on I wanted to get into coaching, and I figured I wasn't going to be a Division One basketball player. I'm not extremely athletic, not extremely tall at, at 6'1", so I felt like that was the best opportunity for me to get a chance to, to meet other coaches, see kind of what, what goes all, a lot of times behind the scenes. I think that as a player, you don't always see that all the work that coaches do to put in to prepare for practice, prepare for travel, things that go on on the road. And I think as a manager, that really prepared me, and I was ready to hit the ground running my first coaching job. Oh, you really did. I mean, give us behind the scenes about Evan Key, how you got the call, how you got the interview, because it happened very, very quick. The former coach is now at Stratford. Yes. Well, um, I was actually working at a school called Cuca College in upstate New York. I was a full-time assistant there for two years. I had done my master's degree at Elmira College in upstate New York for two years. And before that, I worked at Marymount University after I left Christopher Newport. So I think my connection through Christopher Newport, I think that the head coach, Kikorian, there knew uh, Michael Allen, who's the new athletic director of the Apprentice School. So I think that was one of the reasons why my resume might have gone through the first kind of round of, of processing and, and vetting. And from there... Um, I actually had two on-campus interviews. I thought I did really well. Got a chance to, to share my vision of what I thought the apprentice school basketball program would be with uh, our athletic administration. And they gave me a call, and that was not, not too long before I got started. So I really, really hit the ground running heading into August. But I just really lucked out, was fortunate, right place, right time, knew the right people. I think I interviewed pretty well. And I'm glad that they agreed with my vision and kind of saw what I saw school basketball could be. Very good. Evan Key is the head men's basketball coach at the Apprentice School. And you really, they always say practice starts, you know, uh, in October last month. But I'm sure you started already putting game plans already and formulating a roster. How does that work as far as the roster, the schedule, and your staff? Well, what's actually kind of unique about the Apprentice School is we have various start dates throughout the year. Um, when I got hired in August, we actually had six guys that were listed on the roster was kind of a seventh guy that walked up to me that said he was recruited to play basketball. So from there, we, we kind of just got in contact with all the connections that we had. I was able to assemble staff relatively quickly. Um, two local guys that had been in Virginia, so they were able to kind of help pinpoint me in the right direction of guys I should look at. I called a ton of my coaching mentors who were in the area. They gave me the names of some guys. And from there, we kind of got to start building our roster up a little bit more from when I first got here, as well as we added some guys from the football program. And in terms of, of gearing up for practice, uh, I've had a general idea of how I want to, to coach. And 
the style of play that we want to have um, in my first year here. So those were things that had been thought about over the last six years that I've been coaching and, and probably longer than that. Uh, so really just just want to, to kind of see, what, what make up our roster and, and kind of gear how we play towards our strengths and weaknesses. And still figuring out a lot of that right now, but I think that we're headed in the right direction and we're, we're putting ourselves in a position to be successful. All right, this is November. As far as the schedule, how does it look and how many games were you able to put your footprint on? Well, actually, our schedule was pretty much almost completely made. Um, there was actually one game I had to get scheduled and two scrimmages um, that were there kind of out in the open. But it's very, very competitive. Uh, a lot of it was set in stone, and, and it's, this is definitely going to be a challenging schedule. I think we have one home game before January. The rest of the time, we're, we're kind of road warriors. Uh, we have Virginia State on the schedule. We're playing a home-and-home home with Shawan. So we see them twice in November. We're playing uh, Virginia Wesleyan. We're playing Washington and Venice. We're playing Stratford twice, which is a local mm -hmm. program. And I know they're doing a really good job there. And we're playing Bridgewater College and Eastern Midnight in ODAC. So we're, we're really not ducking anybody. We're going to play a competitive schedule. And I think our guys really get up for those games. A lot of times we're playing the Division Three and the Division Two schools. Our guys, they, they look forward to those games a, a, a lot because that's their kind of chance to, to prove themselves. And some of the schools they might have been looking at coming out of high school, maybe they thought they were overlooked a little bit. So going forward, we're going to continue to have a very competitive schedule. And we actually get the chance to travel a little bit. We go down to Florida for a classic at Florida National University. We're also going up to New York, uh, SUNY Delhi, for a tournament up there. So, spreading our wings a little bit, getting to see some some different places, um, different styles of basketball, and going up to upstate New York for me will be kind of interesting because I've been coaching it the last four years. Yeah, a lot of traveling too as well, but it's a lot of fun. A lot of coaches like certain styles of offense and defense. You've seen Jim Beheim, who's been in Syracuse since the 70s, he will not do nothing but the zone. You have a certain signature on your offense and your defense. I think we, we want to play fast and we want to get up and down the floor. Um, we're pretty guard heavy, especially this season, so I think a lot of that we're going to have to do. And it really fits towards my coaching style. I think that the guys that are playing basketball at Prentice School, I mean, they're, they're working a full-time job. So basketball has got to be somewhat enjoyable to them. So I want to make sure that we're, we're playing as many guys as possible. If we can get to a 12-man rotation going forward in the season, I think that would be ideal. Um, I want to get up and down the floor. I want them to really look forward to, to basketball. And one way to do that is if everyone's scoring a lot of points and everyone's touching the ball, that's one way to kind of keep them engaged as opposed to if we were kind of playing a slower tempo. So we're going to look to press and we're going to look to – Hopefully, hopefully score a lot of points, and, and hopefully that puts us in a position to win. I think we'll have some success doing that. One thing, too, Evan, is you've got a great area here, the 757-804 area codes to recruit from, because there's high schools literally in your own backyard. That makes recruiting definitely a lot easier. Uh, I know a good makeup of a roster. They're local. They're from the area. And that was one point of emphasis when I was hiring my staff. I wanted to make sure that I hired guys that had roots here, and especially for me coming back to the area. I have some roots in some different areas, and their connections here might be a little bit stronger. But this is an area we want to continue to, to really tap into, and we, if we can get some of the best players coming out of the 757 and the 804, I think that, that puts us in a position to be successful. Because if you look at all the pro colleges and programs that are, that are in this area, they're all pretty good. You look at Hampton University, Norfolk State, Christopher Newport, everyone's pretty good that's located here. And we want to make sure that we're eventually one of those programs, too. When you talk about uh, you know staying in shape and fundamentals, is that going to be the key early on for you as far as the games in November and December so they won't be physically and emotionally tired? Because they do work full time. Yeah. They do get paid. So it's a unique situation at a Division three level, correct? Yes. And, and that's just something that when we got started, the first thing I wanted to do was get them on a strength and conditioning program. Uh, fortunately, by the time I got hired, it was, it was mid-August, and they were able to get with our strength coach twice a week. And from that point on, I got them on a conditioning program where they went four times a week doing that. And I think that really helped get them in shape. Uh, we, we didn't have a, an overly large roster really in the beginning in conditioning, so I knew that we were going to have to be able to run and play guys at a certain high level of minutes. And fortunately, I think that they've been doing a good job with, with kind of preparing themselves for the season and hopefully going forward we're able to sustain our, our level of conditioning and hopefully knock on wood injury free. All right, this is the November edition of Sports Highlights. At Greg Bick on Twitter. For more, go to nnpstv.com. Pleasure talking to Evan Key, the brand new head men's basketball coach of the Apprentice School. We've had a lot of Apprentice School guests over the years. And of course, uh, you talk about uh, the rules in basketball as far as uh, the timeouts and so forth. Do you try to work that to your advantage? What are some of the rule changes going into this year? Well, really, it's not too much. Uh, it's For me, it's just I'm the one actually making the decision. So I think for me, my, my whole mindset has to be a little bit different. As an assistant coach, they say, every suggestion that you have sounds really good. And now I'm sitting six inches to the, to the right. My, my, my decision is the one that ultimately has to get done. So 
this timeouts are something I'm looking for. Or I'm looking into kind of the best way to strategize and. If we're looking to maybe do media timeouts, I know that's one way to, to kind of extend the game and give our guys some more breaks. But those are adjustments that I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to make. And I know our guys are going to be in good shape, so hopefully we won't have to blow too many early. But really the rule changes have been pretty consistent from last year to this year. You mentioned you've been working on your coaching style since you've been a kid pretty much. But have you drawn something from Hampton and Christopher Newport? And you mentioned your father as well and DeMatha. What really is your signature as far as uh, your coaching style, your pedigree? Well, I think I've drawn something from every place I've been. I've had the fortune of working for some great people and getting a chance to really interact with them and see the way that they coach the game of basketball. I think my, my signature is, is going to be just – how, how we play and how we prepare. I'm a really blue chip guy, a hard worker. I, I really work myself from the ground up. So I want our guys to kind of make sure that they're embodying that same role. And a lot of, they're working, uh, again, a full-time job on the shipyard. That's not easy work. So I think we're a really blue collar program and that we're gonna hopefully exemplify a lot of toughness and a lot of grit. I think you said it exactly right, preparing before game day. It's not just about the uh, game day operation. It's about the practice and the before and the after. The right attitude, because you know attitudes can affect it. Also, physical and mental and staying in shape. But we mentioned it's really the whole spectrum of basketball. you got to be really ready before the jump. Yes, absolutely. And that, that was the biggest thing. We just wanted to make sure our guys were in the weight room, getting stronger, and that they had a top level of conditioning. The preparation in terms of X's and O's is on myself and my coaching staff. But our guys have really done a great job buying into what we've been teaching them. And I'm just – Pretty optimistic that's going to continue to carry on for the rest of the season. Now that you're head coach, you can be pretty much just focused on your team, the practice, the game film, or are you still going to have time to watch other college or NBA games? Oh, absolutely. I'm still going to be a basketball junkie. That's just who I am. So I know any any given moment I'm, we're outside of practice and I'm not on the road recruiting, I'll be watching game film and I'll be checking up on other schools I, I worked at. And hopefully I'll get over to Hampton University at some point to see them play. I'm still a huge HU fan, and I love the stuff that Coach Joyner runs over there. Is it too far out of the question you could ever play a school higher up in the uh, Division Two or Division One level? I'd Division Two to level you played yeah, before. Yeah, we yes. played Virginia State. We're playing right. Swan, so we played Division Two uh, up in, even this season. But I play, I play Hampton University if they want to play. I think it'd be a great time for our guys, and I think that our guys would really get up for that, and the community would get a chance to come out and, and kind of support two local programs. So I, I'd be fully, fully on board with that if they were. Yeah, and of course in the past, them and Norfolk State both made the NCAA tournament, so that would be great. Well, look, all the best to you, all your uh, uh, great staff coming up, and of course, brand new season. I know you're excited, and hopefully you'll stick around for a while, and uh, it sounds like you really love what you do. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't imagine doing anything other than coaching basketball. I've been fortunate to stay in the profession this long, and I'm hoping that, you know, the apprentice school will have me for a, for a lot longer. Keep that fire lit. You, I love your energy. <laughs> Very good, folks. All right, Evan Key, head men's basketball coach of the apprentice school. They're lucky to have him with all his energy, his strength, and his knowledge about the game that he really loves, and that is the sport of basketball. Stay tuned. We'll talk to Steve Whitley, who is a Tidewater Basketball Officials Association Commissioner, after these messages on our November edition of Sports Highlights. Stay tuned. Fitness with Alexis. Tune in weekdays 6.30 a.m., Mondays 7.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. And welcome back to our second segment of our November edition of Sports Highlights. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. My name is Greg Picabaris. Glad you're with us. For more, go to nnpstv.com. Hope you enjoyed our first guest, Evan Keyhead, men's basketball coach in the Apprentice School. And let's switch gears a little bit with softball and basketball as we talk to Steve Whitley, Tidewater Basketball Officials Association Commissioner. Good to see you. Thank you, Greg. You've been involved in sports pretty much your entire life, and you even went to the Apprentice School as well. Talk about your sports background. Oh my gosh, <clears throat> I started playing sports when, when I was a kid. My dad coached me in baseball, uh, played basketball, rec basketball, played rec football, three, played all three sports all the way through high school. And then uh, 
I decided I wanted to be a coach and, and, and teach health and PE. So I went to Old Dominion. Well, 19 year old uh, freshman in January, second semester starts, I get wrapped up with the chicken pox. So bad, mm -hmm. I wind up withdrawing from, from the second semester. So uh, I had played football all my life and was a gentleman that, uh, that used to come all to my high school football games. He knew that the administrator at the shipyard and I never went back to Old Dominion, got into the apprentice school in April of 1975 and played four years of football there and uh, two years of baseball and made a career at the shipyard. I was there 41 years, retired of March of 2016. Uh, so today I'm just piddling around. I'm still doing, doing high school uh, basketball, uh, high school softball. Um, as you said, I'm the commissioner of the local Tidewater Basketball Officials Association. That's not really piddling around. You're, no, you're, no. you're busy. Yeah. I work part-time at Cypress Creek Golf Course just to have something to do and play free golf, keep well, going. Well, let's talk about uh, how has officiating changed, first of all, in the high school and the collegiate level, because you've done both. Well, you know, at one time, uh, it was a lot of differences. Like, you go to the ACC, it'd be a lot of touch fouls. You play the Big Ten, everything, everybody get knocked around. So then the point of emphasis changed. You know, they brought the three-point line in. Everybody wasn't packing everybody down in close and beating everybody to death. Now the three-point shot's a big part of the game. And uh, so uh, then they, they changed the rules, especially in high school. They want you to call hand checks, uh, forearms on body, players coming up to court, two hands, one hand continually jabbed. And we've been instructed by the Virginia High School League and the National Federation of High School to, uh, to call that. Some of the coaches don't like it. Uh, we try to be consistent in what we call local, but sometimes the teams travel and go to another area in the state and they may not call it the same way. So consistency, and we try to stress consistency at our level to all our officials from the JV right on up. But anytime you got 80, 90 people, it's hard to be consistent, everybody to be consistent, but what we try to do and what we tell our coaches, we want the three officials in that game that night to at least be on the same page so they'll know how to play. And the kids will figure it out pretty early in the game what we're calling. You know, you've had some great referees here. My dad always talked about Cootie Allman and also the late Jesse Kersey I've interviewed before. Talk about those two gentlemen. I didn't know Cootie because I, I can't. He was gone by the time I was here, but I knew Jess real well. Played a lot of golf with him, and uh, Brian, his son, and I played a lot of slow pitch softball in the city of Newport News, Rec Legs, and still good friends with Brian. I know I know him well. You know, he's the commissioner of the Atlantic Coast Conference now. Uh, he moved on. We've had some good officials come through through this area, and and Nelson Ellis. He was, I guess he was my mentor. He he was the commissioner when I came to to the top. Well, it, back then it was the Peninsula Basketball Officials Association, and TBOA kind of spun off from that. And uh, Nelson formed that group, and of course you know he passed away a few years ago, mm -hmm. and and he was my mentor, and I helped him schedule games. Did his the computer side of it because Nelson wasn't very computer savvy, mm -hmm. so I did that for him for over oh probably over ten years. Wow. So when Nelson got sick, I kind of like fell into the position. Mm -hmm. So I've been the commissioner now. This is my seventh year as commissioner in the local city. What are the responsibilities as a commissioner? Well, I have to meet with all the ADs and principals. I have to negotiate all the contracts and the fees for our organization, uh, assign all the games, uh, just determine what level this each official is going to be at, whether JV, varsity, boys, girls. and uh, Who pays the referees? Uh, the, the school system. Newport News City Schools pay for the for the uh, new five Newport News High Schools, the Hampton City School pays for the four, and then, of course, Gloucester's, you know, by themselves in, in the Peninsula District. Are there always coaching stories with the referees? Why is it that the coaches and the referees, which in football, they don't hear it as much, but basketball, you hear everything. Yep, yep. We're, we're really Tell us close. a good story. Oh, golly. The, the, I guess the best story, I, I was working with Don Ellis mm -hmm. at, at a Kickatan game, and Revis Conrad, Mm -hmm. was the coach at Kickatan again. He had some pretty good programs over there. Oh, yes, he did. And I looked over there on the sideline, and Donald, he made a call, and Revis didn't like it, and he's laying on his stomach in the coach's box, mm. like doing the worm or something like mm. in, in the coach's box. And Donald says, Revis, get up. You look like a beach whale over there. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was a good story. That's, that's a funny story. Yeah, and George Walters, of course, the late George Walters. And uh, you remember the ferguson Wark rivalries with Jim Harvey and George Walters or Pop Pitts. They were great rivalries. Yep. I think Mr. Harvey went to Granby after he left, yes. left, left Warwick. I did some Coach Walters games when he played at the old Ferguson High School before they, before they created a, a Heritage High School. Right. You know. We're talking, of course, to Steve Whitley with the Tidewater Basketball Officials Association. Of course, uh, you mentioned the apprentice school, and you played for a little bit for Norm Snead, the former Giants and Redskins quarterback. And I've said this on the air. I was still intrigued as a kid. I mean, he played with the Giants up until 76. 
three years later, Phil Simms was, uh, you know, the quarterback. So he played with some really good eras of football back then. Yeah. Sneed, talk about uh, what he meant to you. Oh, he was he he was he brought a different mentality. I played I played two years for Gene Yearwood at the Brennan School, and you know he was Gene was just a good old country boy, worked down in the machine shop. But Norm brought the professional side of it out. All the drills and everything that we did, it was all just like they did at an NFL training camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, like like Evan said, you know we were just a bunch of shipyard workers. You had to love the game to come out to do it because you were out there beating steel, working down the bottom of a submarine all day, and then you had to come two hours of football practice and. And it was tough, but uh, luckily he, he pretty much understood. He I think he adjusted to to the type of uh, a talent that he had. He he quickly realized that, that we weren't NFL players; that we were apprentice school players. You said he could still throw the football pretty well. Oh my gosh, he he would get out there 30, 35, 40 yards away, and he had a tire hung on a rope on the goalpost, and he could just stand there consistently and just throw a, a, a BB right right through the center. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And, and that was great for the quarterbacks because, you know, it's, it's great to have a guy like that that played that long in the NFL teaching you and mentoring you in that position. Exactly. He played against greats like, uh, you know, uh, whoever, O.J. Simpson, and, of course, some great Rams players too. When you talk about uh, refereeing, you have to be in good shape still because up and down the court, whatever, is not easy with young people. It's not. And uh, what saved us, a lot of us old guys, and that was when we moved to three-man officiating years, years ago, if – if it was still two-man officiating, and it is at the JV level, uh, mm -hmm. still two-man, because it's a monetary thing for the schools, you know, having to pay the bill, and they don't want to use three officials. Uh, I think they'd get a better game if they did at the JV level, because especially in the AAA, those guys can get up and down the floor as, as fast as the varsity players do. And, uh, you know, we try, to, we try to get the young guys out there that can run, run and keep up with them guys working the, three, the, the, the JV games in the two-man crews. But varsity at three-man, it, it's not bad. Uh, you, you don't get to take much time off it in a fast-paced game, but, you know, every game is different. And, and, you know, some nights it ain't that bad, but some nights it's like a, uh, just like a track meet out there. Yeah, I like the high school rules still, even back when I was in high school, eight-minute quarters. And these are not professional athletes. These are high school kids. College kids play 20-minute halves. The girls play 10-minute quarters. Do you like all the different protocol? And the NBA, of course, is 12-minute quarters. Yeah, I I, really, I wish the high school would go to a 16-minute half. Really? And, yeah, I mean, they could use the timeouts if they need a break. These kids are, these kids are 15 to 18 years old. Mm -hmm. they, they don't need a timeout. We need a timeout worse than they do. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about softball because that's another sport that you love. How did you get involved in that and talk about uh, what you do with softball? I, uh, I've umpired softball. Well, actually, let's back up. I coached, I coached my daughters at, at Bennett's Creek Little League for 11 years from the time they were nine up to they were like 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And my do both of my daughters pitched at Smithfield High School. And I used to sit behind the plate and, and, and watch the games and watch the games. And Don Ellis, again, the, the guy I had the story with about Revis over there, mm -hmm. he was the commissioner in softball. And I ran the slow pitch men's leg in Smithfield. And, and uh, that's how I met Donald and got involved with him. I got him over there to bring his umpires over there to, you know, to work our men's softball league. So I told Donald when I come over and started doing basketball, I said, when my daughters graduate, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start umpiring softball mm -hmm. with you. I said, because I've sat behind the plate and saw some of them balls. They were called yeah. strikes that, that won't. I said, you need some help whether you believe you do or not. And uh, that's been like 16 years ago, and I'm, I've stuck with it. My whole life sports, I, I, I don't know what I do if it, if, if when I get to the time that I'm not going to be able to do that anymore. Uh, my whole life's rotated around it. I, I often tell the ADs when I meet with them, you know, I should I would have been an AD if I hadn't have been a, 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 an official. Very good. What's well, the love of it? It's in your blood, of course. Yeah. But you talk about, too, the redistricting of the schools and so forth around the state of Virginia. It seems like the VHSL's main goal is Roanoke and the smaller urban counties outside of Charlottesville as opposed to Hampton Roads, Richmond, and so in Northern Virginia because the, the hotbed of sports is Hampton Roads, the 757, of course, Richmond and Northern Virginia, not as much as small cities, but some of the rivalries, the busing, the transportation, you know that better than anybody, trying to get from Smithfield to the James River Bridge over here even or the other side of the water on a weekend is very difficult and it's a lot for these kids to do, especially the Olympic sports during the winter. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll talk yeah. about it as far as transportation getting around. What are your thoughts? Well, it's hard on our officials, too. Uh, you know, we have to be certain places at certain times, and the further we have to travel, the earlier the people need to take off work from their day jobs to get there. 
And, you know, I, I have stressed that to, to, to our customer, which is the ADs and the principals. The expectations of high school basketball officials are way high. You know, you watch the guys on TV. They get to go to the replay. We don't get to watch replay. You know, we promise them in a, by contract that our officials will be at their games 30 minutes before game time because they've got other things they need to be doing. They don't need to look around to make sure that the officials are there. And we run in, you know, you got Interstate 64 now with all the construction. You had going through Grafton, going towards Gloucester. Like you said, if you got to travel to the south side. Uh, we do also, uh, we, we service Walsingham Academy, uh, Isle of Wight Academy, and Surrey High School. So they're not short drives to Isle of Wight and Surrey from, from the peninsula where most of my officials are based out of. So, uh, How about college officiating? How much have you done of that? I did it over 20 years in the, in the ODAC, and it was the old Dixie Conference back at the time, and they announced the USA South. Uh, I did a lot of games for CJ over at uh, Christopher mm -hmm. Newport and Virginia Wesleyan and, and Old Dominion, Randolph-Macon. Uh, not, not Old Dominion, but Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Right. CJ was a great coach, and there were some great games in the Ratcliffe Gym. The kids don't support them like they used to, though. No. As far as attendance. No, but you know, Ratcliffe Gym was so small, it looked like it was a million people in there. Yes, it fact, did. The Freeman Center is a, is a nice gym, so, you know, it, it takes a whole lot more people to, to, to fill that. Very good. Well, continue success in all you do with uh, basketball and uh, softball, and look forward to seeing you down the road, and uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Okay, Greg, you too, and uh, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Steve Whitley right there, folks. Tidewater Basketball Officials Association. It takes officials to get it done before anybody. they got to throw the ball up and have the jump ball as well before it gets started. And, of course, call the strikes and outs in softball. So I want to thank our entire November cast of Evan Key, head men's basketball coach in the Apprentice School, brand new. And, of course, Steve Whitley, Tidewater Basketball Officials Association Commissioner for more good at Greg Vick on Twitter. For our entire crew and Ray Price, happy Thanksgiving. And I'm Greg Vickaveras. We'll talk to you soon.